I'm Andrew Norton, I'm Director of IAD, and I'm really delighted to be welcoming you all to this conference, this event, towards an inclusive blue economy. Um, we believe it's a unique moment. Um, ocean ecosystems are under huge threat from pollution, from habitat destruction, overfishing, and climate change, of course. Um, we know that a billion people worldwide rely on fish as the main or only source of protein, and more than 300 million depend on small-scale fisheries in particular for all or some of their livelihoods. It's a vastly important area and one that hasn't been in the forefront of development thinking for much of my career. So we urgently need policies and legal frameworks at the local, national and global levels to secure the long-term health of these precious ecosystems, but also to ensure inclusiveness in the way they're managed and the access to benefits from the oceans. We do have some positive momentum at the moment, um, particularly in terms of the increasing consciousness of publics worldwide. Um, the ocean plastics issue is huge in the UK, as I'm sure most of you know, and it almost acts like a kind of gateway drug to consciousness about the health of ocean ecosystems. Huge mobilisation there that wasn't there a couple of years ago. And of course, that has brought with it um, more focus on policy dimensions, more focus on the science, certainly in the media, um, and we have this unique moment also in the international process, the process to develop um, a legally binding instrument, an international legally binding instrument um, for the governance of biodiversity on the high seas. Oceans and the blue economy will be a major feature of IID's work for the next five years. We're just developing our strategy for the next five years at the moment um, and thinking hard about how to take that forward as best we can in terms of the particular strengths and connections and networks and knowledge we can bring. Um, and focusing in particular, as you will have seen in the agenda, on both a sense of the urgency of conserving these precious ecosystems for the long-term benefit of all humanity, but also how they can best be managed in such a way that the people that depend on them for livelihoods, many of whom are among the poorest and most vulnerable in the world, that their livelihoods and their interests are also protected. So we're doing four things. We're supporting a range of countries sort of clustered around the least developed countries in the negotiations for the, the BBNJ process, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. Um, again, looking for ways of finding out, I think the tagline that we've used is how half of the planet can be governed for the benefit of all the world's people. So again, a, a strong focus on inclusion as well as sustainability. We'll also be seeking to improve or help to improve understanding of the economic and social values of small-scale fisheries. Um, informal produ production in general is often underestimated in the way countries manage and plan their economies and there are some real dangers when um, the significance of small-scale fisheries uh, for nutrition and also for ecosystem services and also for livelihoods is not properly recognised. At the national level, we'll be looking to engage planners, um, policy makers in looking at the ways in which fiscal reforms, expenditure and taxation can be managed to ensure inclusive and sustainable outcomes in the blue economy. Um, and finally, we will also be looking at, the, at how we can best understand how to monitor SDG 14, life below water, what does monitoring, evaluation and learning for SDG 14, what should that look like? Um, all of this work will be done by our Oceans team, led by Esam Mohammed. Esam, could you just, I'm sure many of you know Esam, but I'll just ask you to stand So a huge thanks to Esam for driving this work program so effectively for us. Um, and one of the things we really hope to do is to start the right conversations to help us make the progress we need to make, conversations between policymakers, communities whose livelihoods are at stake, um, political actors, scientists, business, and others who can make a difference, whether it's publics worldwide or even consumers. 
So we're delighted to have you all here to start those conversations, and many thanks to all of you for being here. I also want to thank the Swedish government for the support they've given um, us in starting up this work program, which is deeply appreciated. And I'm delighted that we have a recorded keynote from Isabella Lovin, the Minister for Environment and Climate and Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, which is coming later in this morning's session. So really, it's a moment, if you like, a moment of opportunity as well as a moment of threat and danger. Um, there's a lot of focus, it's a unique moment where we can try and harness the energy both in public consciousness and in global policy and in national policy to make the progress we need to make. Um, that's all I want to say at this point, so I'm going to hand over now to our facilitator, Gillian Martin. Thank you, Gillian. Excellent. Thank you very much.